In this video, we will be setting up our development environment to start. All right, so the first thing to do is to get an IDE. You can use Sublime, you can use IntelliJ, but I will be making use of Visual Studio Code. So to follow along seamlessly, I'd encourage you to do so. So type in Google Visual Studio Code. It takes you to the landing page, download the version that you have there and install on your platform, be it Mac, Linux, or Windows. I already have that installed. It should look like this, all right? So the next thing to do will be, if you do not have Node, because we will be making it of NPM, so go to Node.js website, download the same, all right? It's an application, choose the version, choose the bit type you have and install. You will be able to follow along with that. So once you have both installed, the next step will be to spin up Next.js. So go to the Next.js website, like so, Next.js. Um, uh, I'd rather you search yarn. Create next app. All right, so type in yarn, create next app. It should give you what you require to spin up or to start a blank project. So I'm going to be copying this, all right, and I'm going to paste it here, and I'm going to call this um, version. Uh, if I can spell it correctly, version. Dashboard cool. So when you click on it, it will install the package. It takes a while, so I'm going to pause this and I'm going to resume after this is installed. All right, we have Next.js installed. All right, what we're going to do next is to cd, which is change directory into version dashboard clone. We go into that directory and we open Visual Studio Code again. So we're going to be closing the parent instance, which is the big one here, and we're going to be using the small one. So I'm going to open my terminal again. That, and I'm going to type yarn dev. Okay. So this should spin up my server and. It should have localhost 3000. It should be a boilerplate next project, all right, as expected. What I want to do next, I'm going to create, like, open another terminal here. What I want to do next is to install Bootstrap as well as React Bootstrap. So what I'm going to type is yarn dev yarn add React Bootstrap and Bootstrap. I'm going to pause the video or the record again, and I'm going to come back when both are installed. Okay, Bootstrap is installed. React Bootstrap is also installed. So what we want to do now is to restructure our folders. So what I want to do is create a, a, an SRC folder, a source folder here, then put in my styles into SRC, move that in, then move in pages into SRC, like so. Then this gives me, I think I need to stop this so that this can move. Okay, good, it's stopped and it moved. So now, um, because as we expand the project, we're going to have a lot of folders and it can get messy if everything is not under this directory. So the next thing I want to do is to come to extensions. I want to install this plugin, SCSS to CSS. The reason I am installing this plugin is because we're making the bootstrap. And if you check from the website, of course, this is not the bootstrap theme. So we're going to be theming this project. We're going to be customizing the theme, our bootstrap default theme. So what you want to do is to search for SCSS to CSS. So what that does is wherever, whenever you use a SAS file, okay, we're going to be updating the default bootstrap file to our customized all right 
So the next one we're going to have, okay, in styles here, we're going to be creating one called main.scss, okay? We'll leave it blank for now. All right. Then inside our bootstrap installation, we're going to go into this file to get bootstrap itself. So if I come here and I right click, copy path, then I come to um, pages app.js okay instead of this global global dot this i'm going to replace it with bootstrap all right okay now i need to change certain things here is what i'll do instead okay i can still leave this i'll do my import there okay i mean leave it as this but instead of what we have here i'm going to replace it Okay, with Bootstrap import. So import URL. So now this one here. Eh? I'm going to Alt Z to wrap around. Um, and I don't need the additional import. Control H. I want to change the backslash to forward slash. All right. Now I'm using absolute path. Um, I'm supposed to use relative, so give me a minute and I will do that. Okay, this is not modules. Actually, this is supposed to be double up. Exactly. Not modules, bootstrap distribution, CSS, bootstrap. The main the CSS. All right, so now I'm going to rerun the, the server. Get on dev. All right. Um, I'm using Apple systems, but just wait a minute. Not here. All right. So it should give me the bootstrap theme. And this is different from where it was before. Um, to prove that, I'm just take out this one. Okay, so what I have, so if I refresh, I should still have a styled content. You notice this is not timed new romance like you would have if, for example, I don't import anything. All right, so you get times new romance. So we are currently working with the bootstrap theme. But like I said, I do not want to use this. I want to use a custom one, and that's the reason I have main here. Okay, so now one thing with this is um, I'm going to have to come to what's that place again? SCSS to CSS. And now I want to import this bootstrap of mine. All right. So instead of the CSS, we are going to import the SCSS from the bootstrap folder, which looks like this. So what I'm going to do is to copy the path. So if you check node modules, on that bootstrap, there is a folder called SCSS. So Inside this folder, you will have bootstrap.scss, all right? You will also have variables at underscore variables.scss. And in this variables file, you can see the variables that we currently use. And so these are the ones we will be updating. But let's import this bootstrap.scss file first. So right-click on it, copy path or you could just copy relative path. And instead of this CSS here, all right, so we're gonna paste this node modules, then control H to change from backslash to forward slash. All right, then on top of it, we're gonna be changing certain things so we can see the effect immediately and be sure that what we are updating is correct. So I'm gonna look for primary, all right? So primary, so this is my primary variable, but you notice that it's here, blue. So here's what I'm going to do, team, you know, control F, team, colors, all right? So all these ones here, I'm going to copy this. Let's assume I want to change these ones 
We know the primary for bootstrap is blue, but I'm going to change it to, let me put my semicolon here, purple. Okay, like so. It's telling me secondary is not defined. We will change that, just don't worry. Let's see, yellow. These are just random colors. So of course, we're going to change it to what we have on Velzen. Success is green. Info is blue. Warning is orange. Danger is red. Light is light. And that is F F C C F F5, F5, F5. Dark is 2 8. 2 8, 2 8, 2 8. All right. So if you look at the main.css, this ought to spin up certain things. Give me a minute. Okay. All right. So I think this has to be absolute basically it's not relative because normally it's supposed to expand this backslash to forward slash give me a minute i'm gonna check here all right so yeah this one then theme colors like we changed to purple to danger and then you're going to save and let me see what that gives me here. Um, all right, good. It will give me another bootstrap.main.css content inside my main.css. So what I want to do instead of globals that imports the default bootstrap, I am going to import my main.css. So this is going to give me styles main.css so this becomes my new bootstrap.css so if i check here where we currently running you can see it's changed but let's include a button let's include a button that has a primary color all right so what we're going to do what we're going to do is to come to index.js let's clear out this one let's clear out this one and let's just say now with bootstrap or react bootstrap let me remove home let me remove image and head is too fine would we'll work on this data so we can import from react bootstrap like so and i need a button okay so that button i'm going to place And I'm going to call it submit or login. So now I need a prop. So a variant. Or let me just call color. Um, give me a minute. There it load. I need a primary. Let's see what that gives us. Okay. Now I need to refresh this. We don't have this anymore. Okay, it's true. We need to clear out this. Not uh, here. All right, like you can see, it's purple now. So that's the way we update the default theme. So like the dashboard here, this color is going to be our primary. So I'm going to um, look for what color this is computed background dark so this is our primary color so i'm coming here to main.scss so all these ones i can just take out all i need is a primary we'll talk about the secondary later if there's a way to comment this ones out okay good so we'll do them in bits and in pieces okay so this becomes our primary color um where is exactly like this one then um, fonts is poppins because if you right click on any one of them um, and you check the fonts, let me just you can see it's actually poppins medium. This is a Google font you can pick from Google Web Font. So what I'm gonna do is 
Google Fonts. And I'm going to come to look for Poppins. Alright, so we have 18 styles under Poppins. Let me dismiss. Alright, so it turns out that I've selected them, okay, in the past. So let me just assume they were not selected. So this is how yours would look with the plus instead of the minus. Um, okay, so I think I'm pretty much covered. So now yours would look like this, such that once you begin to select these ones, all right, you can come to the right side and click on that plus. You begin to add or subtract. Here I'm adding and it's changing. So you add all the weight, the font weight of poppins that you can get from here. All right, the next thing to do will be this import here. This is what we need. So just copy what you get. Then you paste it in your file, your SCSS file here. So now we want to change the font, the default font. It's currently using Roboto because if I come to what I have here um, and I right click on this button and you check out what it looks like. You're gonna see that my font actually it's Sego. This looks like it's from Next, but it's not Poppins. We want to change it to Poppins. So what we're gonna do is font family serif is not going to be this one. I'm just gonna copy because this is the variable that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna paste it here and it's like this. Okay, so I'm not using Google Sand, I'm not using this. Basically, this is what is speaking. This one was included by me in a previous project. So I need poppins. All right, so let's see what that gives. All right, so exactly. So now we have poppins instead of Sego. This becomes our font in sync with what we have on Belgium. All right, so let me close this one, close this one, close this one we have. And just close all this. So basically, we are pretty much set up. We will update, we will keep updating the styles as we progress. All right, so for now, this is sufficient. We will get the setup. In the next tutorial, we're going to be working on the authentication pages, starting with login, because that's the entry point for any website. All right. And don't forget to click on the subscribe button below to encourage us to put out great content like this.